Uh, I'd like to thank Mike for encouraging me to submit this talk. Uh, so I'm a bit uh, terrified by public speaking, so please bear with me. This talk is named uh, Intel Intrinsics, not intrinsically about intrinsics. Uh, my first title was Please Use My Library. <laughs> so, uh, so this year I came by plane because I wanted to choose, uh, you get a lot more clauses to choose from. So this is a talk about performance. So in, it will be the same as every talk about performance. I'll try to convince you that speed is still important. Then I will provide the many options we have today. Then I will try to um, present a new option, which is named Intel Intrinsics. And in part four, I will choose favorable benchmark to convince you uh, you can use it. And in part five, I'll uh, tell you to profile your code before attempting anything else. So this is a talk mainly about uh, single instruction, multiple data. Hello, I'm Guillaume Piola, and I run Auburn Sounds, which is a bootstrapped B2C music app business. So the clients are mostly uh, urban music producers. <coughs> and um, I'm happy to have burst uh, a lot of lines of D uh, over the years. Um, I don't really want to know how much. And uh, we have an open score, which is named Dplug. And competition is all C++. So, uh, so far, so good. And what we sell is audio plugins. So audio plugins are small dynamic libraries that process audio faster than real time, hopefully. And there is fierce competition uh, for uh, marketing, uh, sound, and uh, intuitiveness. And uh, typically, some of our plugins have to run at uh, 100 times uh, real time. So uh, the real uh, um, scale of uh, speed can vary from 10 to 300. Uh, and uh, the, an interesting thing about audio plugins is that CPU time is shared. So the less you use the CPU, the more there is for everyone else. So uh, more speed is almost always good. So performance is usually an enabler, not only in audio, but probably in your field. <coughs> it will be very rarely mentioned by B2C customers as long as software is fast enough. They can notice if it's slow but they won't uh, grant you uh, accolades if it's fast. And uh, particularly in audio, but not only in signal processing in general, you have many quality versus CPU trade-offs. So we could say speed enables better sounding algorithm. Uh, to take an example, it will be a short time Fourier transform. You can just make more Fourier transform over time, which is called overlap. Or you can make bigger Fourier transform to have more smooth spectral content, for example. Audio is not special. All, almost all performance-oriented domain can usually trade off quality for speed. So your customers probably love performance even if they don't tell you. <coughs> so how, how do we get faster program? I have to drink, I'm sorry. So your usual advice is to measure, have a baseline, and improve precision make identify bottlenecks faster. So uh, to, to go further on this, about precision. It's quite harder than one think to have proper precision for measure software performance. Um, usually, you want to measure the whole system, but you, you want to optimize a tiny part of the system. So your uh, optimization results will be bounded by the extent that this tiny part was taking before. So increased precision can go a long way toward validating valid optimization and refusing those that make things actually slower. So uh, single instruction and multi multiple data will help, but in D we have a wealth of opportunity with uh, SIMD, which facility to use. So this is the part where I will describe the landscape of SIMD, we have a lot of things that, that are uh, available. And um, what happened is that uh, at Auburn Sounds, I tried to make things faster, and I had to resort to first assembly. 
uh, assembly is a kind of uh, you get what you write. So, <laughs> so this, uh, this sample is a shorter I found in uh, my code base. It's just a linear texture sampling. And uh, it, it is shorter because it is the same for 32 and 64 bits. But this is the only sample I had like this. So what we can say is that you write the instruction name and you are guaranteed to have it. And there are pros and cons. Of course, in D, this will be portable across DMD and LDC, which is a strong point. Performance will be quite predictable. Debug performance will be the same. <laughs> the problem will be that you write it usually twice. It is hard to write, debug, and read, and it's also very, very specific to this processor and this workload. And I will add, it doesn't even yield the best performance most of the time, and it does not get faster over time. The problem is that assembly bypass by and large the backend because the backend doesn't understand what it does. So uh, we'll go a bit in depth in the next slide uh, about what makes assembly not the ideal choice for every time. So option two is core.simd. So it was introduced in 2012 when Manu asked Walter to do something about it. That's why I understand about history. So uh, you can uh, assign floats are grouped for, uh, it gives you vector of types, which are groups, you can assign it. You have a wealth of operators, which uh, leads to optimize the instruction, and you have single access to elements too. And core.smd has also <coughs> pros and cons that I will expose. It will work in all D compilers. It is easy to read, write, and debug. It has a pleasant syntax. The only problem is there is no support in Windows 32 bits, which is quite important for audio customers, but <coughs> perhaps your customers too. And uh, x86 CPU have way more operations than that. Usually, so I listed a few instructions you won't be able to do with the core core S dot SIMD. So, uh, in implementing Intel intrinsics, we have a lot of name like this, which is which are the intrinsics, which are to be implemented. So, like, here we see uh, the same uh, instruction, which adds four floats together implemented both with core.smd. Do you see anything? Yeah, yeah okay. And uh, with assembly, and uh, what we see is a catastrophic overhead from prelude and uh, postlude in the function. So you do get the right instruction, but uh, because the backend doesn't understand what you say, and essentially it is uh, passed through, uh, it cannot optimize some of that code. So we could say assembly blocks may have devastating overhead. But core.smd is fundamentally great. I mean, um, if only for the few cons, it is definitely a great thing to have. So there is option three, which is the same thing, plus d underscore simd, which is a DMD extension add at the same time. And this one is less applicable because it only works in DMD. And then we have option four, ldc.simd, which is an extension of core.simd, which adds shuffle vector, aligned load store, some floating point comparison. And it adds them in a way that is portable, like the core, core.simd. And you have a bit more. Some of it was so good, it made it back to core.simd. The cons is, of course, that it's LDC specific. And again, many x86 operations are not doable using LDC.simd, which leads us to, of course, option five. Oh, no. Okay, so uh, the pros and cons are not um, are not in 
perfect adequation. Uh, we want kind of everything, so we want to be portable, but at the same time, we want direct access to the instruction. And of course, these goals are in tension and will be in tension throughout the talk. And then I stumbled upon ldc.gcc built-in x86, which I won't pronounce twice. And uh, so uh, the problem are the big names, but basically it gives you guaranteed the right instruction for most of what exists. So it extends core data SMD with built-ins. Again, it is, it is LDC specific. So with this information, I thought I had enough to build the familiar syntax that was used in C++ based on Intel intrinsics, which is a staple in C++ native development. So this library, Intel intrinsics, starts as a familiar syntax above option five. So let's get back to mm underscore add underscore ps, which leads to this instruction. So one thing to understand with intrinsics is that their semantics is always modeled upon the instructions they are supposed to emulate. So with core.smd, we have nothing to do because the operators are already overloaded. So this was a simple one. But if we have the add ss instruction, we have to implement it with an LDC specific intrinsic, which is actually a built-in. So far, so good. So uh, I start implementing the hundreds of intrinsic function. The problem is that uh, the built-in disappeared upon me. So uh, LDC 1.1 removes that one, for example. The built-ins are disappearing. So I went to the LDC bug tracker and uh, complained. These intrinsics have disappeared. And every release of LDC had quite a list. I guess there is another way to do it with SIMD vector extension. And the answer was, what are you talking about? <laughs> I have no idea where those intrinsic came from. As far as I know, LDC never supported this directly. Where were they declared? What are you talking about? <laughs> Are you sure your optimization at this low level actually pay off? Have you profiled your code? Good question. <laughs> that's, uh, that, uh, that's very funny. Um, the intrinsics are a list um, which is available in LLVM. And uh, during the build process of LDC, um, this list from LLVM is uh, taken and uh, the uh, <coughs> DE module is uh, generated from it. So uh, it's, uh, it's in the build process of LDC. And I, I don't I'm mean this as criticism at yeah. all. I was I'm just <laughs> explaining why. <laughs> so and, uh, indeed, uh, like Kai said, uh, the built-ins are generated from lists that belongs to Silang. So if Silang decides to remove a built-in, uh, they right. will also disappear in LDC without their knowledge. So the, the other problem you then have is it depends on the LLVM version you have uh, LDC compiled with. So it's not only the LDC version, but also the LL LLVM version you depend on. So I went to uh, this fringe alternative language named C++ and see, <laughs> and see how was life in the other edge. And uh, there was just several me. So uh, people uh, would come with uh, that question frequently. It seems that Silang doesn't recognize all of the SSE2 intrinsics with uh, built-in, uh, I don't pronounce that. This is a built-in, not an intrinsic. Use the right function. Actually, it's a frequently asked question, so they were too tired to answer to people coming with this complaint. <laughs> 
the Intel and AMD manuals document a number MMintrin header file which define a standardized API for accessing vector operation of x86 CPUs. These functions have names like readable names. Compilers have leeway to implement this function however they want. So someone has to build this standardized API for D and it seems that task has befallen upon me. <laughs> so here is how Silang implements MM add SS, which uh, is deceptively simple. I mean, uh, it's just using vector extension. So, uh, uh, does this gener generate the right code if written in D? The answer is yes, and the surprising thing is, even without any optimization, it will generate every time the right instruction. So it seems like the right way to implement this intrinsics. So my realization number one was regular looking code can generate the right instruction reliably. Which leads to realization two, built-in will be a last resort strategy. Built-ins are not intrinsics. Built-ins provide direct instruction generation where intrinsics are somewhat with the same semantic but which may not provide exactly the same instruction. Which leads to the paradox of intrinsics because to implement them you have to use normal decode but normal decode can be sped up with intrinsics. <laughs> so, um, which lead to realization number three. Intrinsics are mostly about semantics and not really about cogen. If you can't guarantee an instruction, it's, it's because uh, built-ins are not about cogen but semantics. Of course, we do use them because we want a particular cogen, I guess. So this is Intel Intrinsics today. So I had leeway to implement them however I want, so I use everything. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as you can see, there are stuff uh, which is not checked on the list. It's because it's quite work intensive. So uh, mostly I use a, a mixture of everything. And in particular, if core.smd is not there because you are using Windows 32 bits, it will try to emulate it very, very slowly. And it's the same for ldc.smd. If you use DMD, this, uh, this library will try to emulate it. So DMD performance, as you will see, will suffer a lot. <coughs> so uh, it's a lot of uh, intrinsics to implement. So uh, I learned three surprising things. There is always three things. <laughs> OK. Suppose your business relies on do it a lot of averages. Uh, you, you need those averages very quickly. So this is uh, the only sequence of intermediate representation in LLVM which can generate averages, barring using assembly. So uh, it's, what is surprising is that it seems the backend recognize its exact seconds and inserts this interaction. It, it looks like cheating, I, I don't know. <laughs> this was surprising. Surprising thing too, not a numbers. So uh, I don't know if you managed to read something, but there are two equivalent way, or so I thought, to implement max. Of these two ways, one gives four or five excess instruction. It's because, again, not all numbers make these two expressions different, and they don't map to the hardware in the same way. So if you are looking for a reason to use Intel intrinsics, I'm, I'm sure you are, you could see uh, that using the right intrinsic will force your float comparison to be of the right kind. And the third surprising thing is this cast. If you use the default LDC flags, there are no way to do this fast. 
there is no SSC way to convert from float or double to a 64-bit integer in 32-bit x86. Maybe this only affects me, I don't know. <laughs> but compare this one instruction to this dozen instruction. I know which one I want. So, uh, of course, I don't provide a solution because uh, you shouldn't want this. <coughs> so, this is Intel Intrinsic today. So, uh, there is 416 Intrinsics for SSC1, SSC2, and MMX. The MMX1 won't use the MMX register, if you are asking. No. So, this is really the equivalent of EMM Intrin, XMM Intrin, and MM Intrin, but for D. Uh, one significant difference is that it does not enable CPU features for you. You have to tell the LDC compiler to enable the right instruction sets. Hopefully, if you enable AVX, it will go faster with SIMD semantics you have given. Hopefully. So it is tested. There is some bonus intrinsics which were uh, sadly missing. Also, it adds a smaller SIMD vectors, because the more you do SIMD, the more you appreciate the smaller vectors, which can be used in more places. And today, so this is a vaporware slide, so I would like to, to use core.SIMD on DMD when it's there. And uh, I know it's today, it's not vaporware yet. Okay. Um, it's the same semantics for DMD LDC, you will get the exact same result. And of course, uh, as this talk may, uh, may indicate, it will be, uh, it is currently focused on x86. And tomorrow, improve performance when using DMD, support GDC. This talk doesn't talk much about GDC, I'm very sorry for that. Support ARM with the same syntax, which will lead to interesting question about semantics. And add pragma inline true, which in, in the latest version of LDC enables cross-module inlining. And cross-module inlining is really important for performance of this library. So is a listing of pros and cons. And uh, one argument is I'm forced to maintain it because I sell products based on it. So um, you can use it today, perhaps. It can lead to slower debug performance and slower DMD performance. We will see in what uh, uh, scale it, it affects. And uh, of course, the goal is cogen completely separated from semantics. It's not yet there. Not yet. We have to cut the built-in link first. Example, which one is faster? So, this is an array of complex numbers, and you want to take the magnitude, <coughs> the squared magnitude, actually, so you want to square them. So I rewrite it with Intel intrinsics, and it's unrolled by two. Which one thinks the upper is faster? Which, which one thinks the second one is faster? Which is sleeping? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, actually, of course, uh, the first one is faster. It's because it's unrolled by form. So uh, my example wasn't well chosen enough. Uh, so um, in this case, it's a bit embarrassing. This was my first example I actually wrote for the conference, and I realized, uh, okay, something is wrong. This code is quite, is not too complicated. I mean, it could be almost written with an, I, an array op. So if it can be written as an array operation, maybe write it as an array operation, it will optimize very well. So this one doesn't work. Okay, another one. Which one is faster? Which one? So this is doing uh, the distance between two points in four dimension. Do you think the first one is faster? Do you think the second one is faster? Okay, still a majority of sleeping people. 
actually they are the exact same speed, exact same speed. It leads to the exact same code because the backend is so awesome, it can recognize this as similar and merge into one single instruction with four operations at once. It does this for the whole. Okay, not a good example at all. So I had to find an example that works and this one is the one that works in actual production code, of course. And uh, this search for peaks in uh, spectral uh, magnitude and a peak will be a point which is a peak. <laughs> <laughs> like this, like this. I can't explain it in words. Okay. So uh, but it leads to this loop with no more than four ifs, nested ifs. And if you are in optimization, you will see that uh, you have the same probability that any comparison is true and any comparison is false. So it's the worst thing ever for branch prediction. If we had a way to force the if to not happen or to just have one if, it will go fa a lot faster. Of course, in real production code, the inner loop was way bigger than this. And this is the Intel intrinsic version. So, the four comparison and bet at once, then we extract one single integer, which we can compare in one if. So now we have a positive benchmark result, which is no less than 3.5x faster. And my talk is done there. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Uh, uh, this is the worst case scenario for the branch optimizer. But if you, if you can rearrange this source code, I don't think you can do much better than, uh, than this. <coughs> okay, so here's a case that doesn't work. If we, in the debug performance will suffer, so in this proportion, mostly because of cross-module inlining, which isn't there. And the DMD performance will suffer 20 <coughs> times because uh, not uh, most of the DMD instructions were emulated instead. Because core.simd specific DMD capabilities were not used yet. It will be perhaps in the future. Except worse DMD performance for now. Okay, so here is a take home message. So you can uh, profile your code. This is, uh, like me, uh, you can have surprise if you don't. Prefer regular decode and array operation and measure that first. Then in some cases, Intel Intrinsics can help. If debug or DMD performance is important, think about the alternatives. And of course, contributions are welcome to make it more widely applicable. Thank you. And this is finished. Well, I mean, we got volume here? Yeah. I mean, you're not exactly quite finished yet. It's questions time. <laughs> I'm sure there's questions here. Raise your hand. Anyone? Uh, anyone? Aha! Ah. Question. <laughs> Well, I was originally going to ask about GDC, but you already said that. So I just want to note, I tried it out in Godbolt just now, and at least at 03, GDC does automatically translate uh, loops into SSE intrinsics. So that's pretty nice. That's instructions, I mean, so that's pretty nice. Thank you much for I'm sorry. That I was a compliment. Okay, thanks. <laughs> 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 I was expecting some uh, destroying. <laughs> Okay, I, I have actual uh, additional content if you want. Uh. All right, okay. Walter's got Another a question. question. Okay. I, I was curious why, um, why do you need to run on Windows 32? Why not just run on Windows 64? <laughs> I don't, but uh, my customer wants because uh, uh, as they use a multitude, uh, multiple uh, dynamic libraries, some of which exist only in 32 bits, they can't always upgrade because that will mean 
giving up a lot of tools. So actually, uh, a few months ago, I said uh, I didn't need any more uh, macOS 32-bit uh, support, and it's true. But customers uh, send me emails saying that they would like to get it back. Oh. <laughs> but okay, uh, it's <laughs> musicians can't upgrade their rig uh, every time, and the more productive the musician, the less he upgrades usually. So, but. Well, since your 32-bit emulation works, does it actually need to be faster? Be because you said the 32-bit the where you're emulating the intrinsics is so much slower. Oh, but, you but yet know, your customers yes, yeah. find uh, this acceptable. I, so uh, we only correct? ship code with LDC uh, currently. Uh, and. Uh, when we do need the debug performance and the DMD performance, we, uh, we use a mixed assembly and uh, Intel intrinsics. Okay. Uh, in, the, in the most hot um, bottlenecks, it's this way. Okay, because the real problem with Windows 32-bit support for XMM is the stack isn't aligned. And... Uh, so, you know, perhaps it could be done using only the unaligned instructions. Would that work? You mean uh, align the stack? Uh, well, the, is it only for arguments? Where the align all the unaligned right? loads and all that? Uh, I'm sorry, I uh, didn't get okay, it. Okay, uh, most of the load and store instructions require that the stack be aligned on 16 bytes. And the 32-bit oh. C compilers align things on uh, four-byte boundaries. Uh, this cost has been mitigated since as well, architecture. How has it been mitigated? I, I don't understand. Uh, it used to be a very different performance between uh, aligned and unaligned uh, loads. And now it's a bit more of the same. Uh, you do lose... Uh, addition from a memory operand, which has to be aligned. So uh, yeah, so 32-bit stacks will still uh, will need to be aligned, unfortunately, for locals. OK, so uh, well, I guess I was running, I was wondering if, if you know, the compiler generated the unaligned loads and stores, would that actually be sufficient? Instead of and just not worry about the alignment. Yeah, I don't think it would be a, a good deal of damage. Okay. All right, another one down here. Uh, I'd like to answer that one. It used to be significantly slower to do unaligned loads, but uh, in the recent processors from Intel, the difference has largely disappeared. It mostly just be cache coherency now, I believe. Anybody else with a question? Nope. All right, then I guess we're done. Thank you again, Guillaume.